This lecture covers the cell as well as the structure and function of the cell organelles. A cell is the smallest unit of life. Look at where it lies in comparison to other things. The atom is the smallest, followed by the molecule, which is a group of atoms, followed by the virus, next is the organelle, then the prokaryotic cell, the eukaryotic cell, and humans. So it ranges from an atom, which is the smallest, to humans, which are the largest in this category. Before we go any further, let me give you a definition for an organelle. An organelle is a specialized structure within a eukaryotic cell in which particular cell processes occur. Here is a labeled animal cell. Look back at slide number two and see if you correctly labeled the animal cell on that slide. One cell organelle is the plasma membrane. Its job is to protect, to hold in the cell contents, to regulate what moves into and out of the cell, and it is composed of two layers of phospholipids and proteins. Here is a drawing showing the detail of the plasma membrane. You can see the phospholipid bilayer and the proteins that make up the cell membrane. The cytoplasm is an organelle. It is the fluid portion of the cell and it contains water-soluble proteins like salts, sugars, and other things. Most cell organelles are located in the cytoplasm and most cellular activities occur in the cytoplasm. Another cell organelle is the mitochondrion. They are tiny thread-like sausage-shaped organelles and they are known as the powerhouse of the cell because they provide most of the cell's energy in the form of ATP. The more active a cell is, the more mitochondria it contains. Here is a drawing of a mitochondrion showing the outer membrane, which is smooth, the inner membrane, which has finger-like projections or invaginations known as Christi, and a fluid central area known as the matrix. Again, you should have noticed that the mitochondrion has a double membrane around the outside. The inner membrane has invaginations called Christi, and the purpose of the Christi is to provide more surface area on which reactions can occur. The job of the mitochondrion is to produce ATP, which is a very high energy molecule. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. It is named for the molecules that make it up. On the right, you can see a picture of ATP. The ribosome is a very small, dark staining granule. It's composed of proteins and ribosomal RNA, or rRNA. It is composed of two subunits, known as the 40S and the 60S. It looks sort of like a snowman. It is the place where protein synthesis occurs. There are two types of ribosomes. Some ribosomes float free in the cytoplasm, and they are said to be free ribosomes. Some are bound to the endoplasmic reticulum, and they are known as bound ribosomes. This is a drawing of a ribosome. It shows you the two subunits, the 40S, or light subunit, and the 60S, or heavy subunit. You can see its snowman appearance. The centrioles are minute cylindrical organelles near the nucleus in animal cells. They occur in pairs, and they are involved in the development of the spindle fibers during cell division. The nucleus is an organelle found in eukaryotic cells. Inside its fully enclosed nuclear membrane, it contains the majority of the cell's genetic material. This material is organized as DNA molecules along with a variety of proteins to form chromosomes. It is the control center of the cell and directs protein synthesis and cell reproduction. Most cells have only one nucleus, and all cells of the body except mature red blood cells have a nucleus. The nucleus is the largest organelle in the body. The nuclear envelope is a highly regulated membrane barrier that separates the nucleus from the cytoplasm and eukaryotic cells. It's a double membrane and it contains small holes called nuclear pores. Substances can pass between the nucleus and the cytoplasm through these pores. Here is a diagram of the nucleus showing the nuclear envelope, the nucleolus and the nuclear pores, and chromatin before it becomes chromosomes. The nucleolus is located in the center of the nucleus of a cell. Most cells have one or two nucleoli. They can vary in size depending on the type of organism. The main components of the nucleolus are RNA, DNA, and proteins. The nucleolus has one main function, and that function is the production of the subunits of a ribosome. 
This production of ribosomes indirectly involves the nucleolus in protein synthesis. In addition, the nucleolus is involved in about 50% of RNA synthesis. Chromatin is a complex of DNA and proteins that forms chromosomes within the nucleus of eukaryotic cells. When the cell divides, it coils and chromatin becomes chromosomes. These chromosomes contain hereditary information. This slide just shows you the general appearance of six chromosomes. A chromosome is composed of two sister chromatids that are identical. They are connected in the center by a centromere. Again, this slide just shows you the general appearance of chromosomes. In this picture, you can see the difference in size between the X chromosome and the Y chromosome. The X chromosome is much larger.